The side effects in children who have had too much screen time as infants can be reversed. Singapore scientists say it's not too late to reverse such effects that include slower decision-making and increased anxiety. A recent study involving the National University of Singapore, KK Women's and Children Hospital and ASTAR linked infant screen time exposure to long-term changes in the brain and teenage mental health. Mama Bahadur tells us more. Researchers tracked around 170 children for over a decade, from the day they were born, including brain scans taken at different points. They found that between the ages 0 and 2, each additional hour of screen time was linked to the children being 25% slower at decision-making by age 8 and a half. By their teens, these children had higher anxiety symptoms. These effects appeared across all socio-economic backgrounds. So, slower thinking or slower decision-making could manifest as a slightly longer period of hesitation before making a decision even if the choice is clear. So, a very good example would be for someone who's standing at the curb and thinking about whether or not to cross the road when the traffic light turns green, right? For a person who has slower thinking or has problems with decision-making will probably take a longer period before deciding to eventually step up and cross the road. In terms of anxiety, it can actually manifest in diverse ways. And some example would be an individual who have excessive worrying, um, an individual who likes to avoid um, social circumstances, or sometimes they could even manifest with physical symptoms like increased heart rate, sleep disturbances. So all these issues with decision-making and anxiety could actually impact different dimensions of an individual's life from affecting an individual's academic performance or when they go into adulthood, it can actually affect your work performance. And if you looked at interpersonal relationship, it actually also requires a lot of these skills and that potentially could be impacted as well. And if you can't make friends, it would also actually lead to loss in self-confidence and loss in self-esteem. Everybody. Dr. Tan said that the research tracks children born in 2009 who watch television and warned that for children in the current generation who grew up watching phones and tablets, the consequences may be even worse. So do you think that there's a greater chance of even worse adverse effects in our generation with infant screen time compared to your study that looked at it in 2009? Unfortunately, the answer to that would be yes. The screens nowadays is just so accessible, right? Children as young as two to three years have their own iPads and that's not really uncommon. That's also the reason why research in screen time, especially in young children, is actually gaining a momentum. So if we can't avoid it, we really need to better understand it so that we could actually provide uh, more informed uh, guidance to parents and caregivers. Meanwhile, Dr Tan said that parents play a crucial role in reversing the effects of screen time. Engaging in enough social and physical interactions can help to produce all-round brain development in children aged 0 to 2. These include playing music, sports and reading together. For parents watching it who are thinking, oh no, I've already shown my children some screen time when they were kids, growing up especially, what's some advice or small changes that they can pick up you know, to try to reverse these effects or address the issue? It's never too late. <laughs> So children's brains are highly adaptable. So any positive changes at any ages would benefit the child. Even in children who have been exposed to high level of screen time earlier on. Try switching out a small block of screen time and try to replace it with more engaging activities like perhaps is taking like 20 minutes off a child's screen time, bring the child for a walk in the park or even stay at home and play a game face to face or for younger children read a book together. If a child reads alone, the child is just learning a language. But when a child is reading with the parents, it is not just about the words on the pages, it is about the back and forth interaction, learning how to recognise facial expression and emotions as they interact with their parents. If screens are being used, keep it simple, keep it slow, keep it interactive.
right? Try not to leave an iPad with a child alone and let them watch cartoons endlessly. But instead, you know, if you want to use an iPad as an educational tool, you can actually potentially sit with the child, call view, ask questions, have back and forth interaction. And as much as possible, it's not just about reading and screen time, like not all or none, right? Try to expose the child to a diverse form of real world experiences. Now moving forward, uh, you're going to track these children into adulthood. How are you going to do it and what are you looking out for especially? Designing intervention is definitely our next step. Um, but before we even go as far as to engaging other organisations, I think what is more crucial is to try and understand the effect of screen time in a more comprehensive manner. Another area that we are really hoping to do is to look at screen time not only on its own, but also looking at how it interacts with other everyday behaviour like sleep and physical activity. Because I think there is actually a lot of talk out there that mention that sometimes the adverse effect that we see with screen time may not actually be a direct effect of screen time. It could be because, for example, adolescents who spend a lot of time in front of the screen does not have enough sleep. Or because they are sitting in front of the screen all the time, they are not getting enough physical activity. And all the adverse outcomes that we are, we are seeing in these adolescents are actually a combination of high screen time, low physical activity and insufficient sleep. So really the next step is for us to have a better understanding of how this everyday behaviour actually interact. We're hoping that we will be able to design a comprehensive intervention that could guide people um, to address this in a more holistic manner.